Hi there, it's Rob from Oxfoot. Welcome to another Will It Deploy video where we try to automate the deployment of different technologies using Octopus Deploy. Today we're going to take a look at automating the deployment of an ASP.NET Core web app using the Entity Framework ORM or Object Relational Mapper with SQL Server 2017 and we're deploying to an AWS Windows 2016 virtual machine. We'll even talk about how to roll back database changes if you have a problem with your deployment. Let's get started. This is the app that we're trying to deploy. It's called Random Quotes, and it gives us just that, a random quote. If I click the big green refresh button, you can see that it gives us a new random quote every time. We've seen this application before, and it's written using the ASP.NET Core 2.0 framework. And previously it used a hard-coded data source, whereas now we've introduced a SQL Server backend and the Entity Framework ORM. We've also introduced a new feature. If you click on an author's name, you can now view the quotes by that author. So in this case, we can see two quotes by Paul Rand. If we head over to Visual Studio, we can see how this is done. So we still have a very simple application. We have a single controller and two views. The standard quotes one, which is our index view, and we also have a new simple quotes by author view. But because we've introduced the entity framework, we now have a quote context which inherits from DB context. And we also have a database initializer which populates our initial data. One thing that we've also done is we are using Entity Framework migrations. And we have two migrations. We have an initial create script, which simply created a base quote table with an author and quote text. So though both the author and the quote were in the same table. But then when we added the new feature, we added the quotes by author page. We introduced that with a new migration. And so in this one, we've done a few things. First, we renamed the author column in the quote table to author name, and we've added an author ID, which is a foreign key to a separate author table. So all the authors are now in one table and all the quotes are in another table. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the design choices here a little later. This is a simple example, but it's representative of what happens with real applications every day. New features are requested and code and database tables and data need to change. We want to be able to automate the deployment of our web app and the database, including all the changes in a repeatable and reliable way. So the big question is, will it deploy? Yes, it will. Let's walk through the solution. I have a local Octopus instance running and I have a single project called Random Quotes and no deployments. If we take a quick look at our infrastructure, you can see that we have three environments, dev, test, and production, which is fairly standard. And if I jump to dev, you can see we have a single server. It's a Windows Server 2016 box in AWS EC2. If we jump over to our project, and look at its deployment process, you can see it's, it's quite straightforward. The first two steps allow me to deploy my database and any database changes. And the final one will deploy my website. The first step is an Octopus package step. And really all it's doing is just copying my random quotes package to the target server, which is running the Octopus tentacle agent. The random quotes package contains my .NET application. I do a .NET publish, and then I just zip up those results. But the other thing that I did as a part of my build process was to call .NET EF migration script. And what this does is it generates a SQL script from my migrations. And so I have that included in my package and also use the dash I or dash dash item potent because that lets you run this script against any database at any migration point. So that's all this step is doing. It's just copying our package to the target server. The next step is to actually execute our SQL migration script. And that's using a SQL execute script file. 
And that's actually a really contributed step template. So if you've never seen them, if you go to add a step, and if we just type in SQL, you can see I have two step templates installed, but there's just a wealth of community contributed steps that let you do different tasks without the need for custom scripting. If we look at this step, we can see that it's run on all servers or all targets with the database role. And you really don't have to specify many parameters. The first one is our database connection string, so it knows which database to use. And the second key one is just the path to the actual file that we're going to be executing. And that's our migration script from the previous step. And so there's a couple other parameters, but those are the two key ones. The last step is to actually deploy our website. And this is using an Octopus deploy to IIS step. So we're deploying to all deployment targets with the web role. And we're again reusing our random quotes package because it also contains our web application binary and view files, etc. The rest of the settings here allow us to configure our website. So we're deploying in an IIS website. We specify the details for the actual website and the application pool. And then finally, our bindings. We're using JSON variable replacement. This enables us to update our application settings or configuration as we deploy our web app through environments from dev test to prod. And this includes key values like our database connection string. If we head over to our project variables, we can see that we have variables for all the config settings that change as we deploy. Our first two app settings are app version and environment name. And we use those to show the deployment details in our web apps footer. We also specify all the details required to build our database connection string, the database server name, username, password, etc. The values are scoped to different environments as required so that we can deploy from dev to test and test to production in a safe and repeatable way. Now let's create some releases and do some deployments. We're going to create releases with two different package versions. The first contains our initial create migration, which just creates our quotes table with both author and the quote text. The second package contains our second migration, which splits out the author's table and updates the original quotes table as well. So let's see how that goes. I'd like to take a quick look at our server. This is our AWS Windows Server 2016 box, and we're looking at SQL Management Studio. So this is our target database, random quotes dev, and I manually created that, and I've also created a service count. Both of those could have been scripted if we chose, but in this case, I just manually created them. If I refresh quickly, the thing that I want to point out is that there's no tables here at all. Now I'm going to go ahead and create our first release. I'm going to call this 1.0.0 and I'm also going to specify our package version 1.0.0 as well. And that's because this is the version of the package that just has our initial create migration. So with that, I'm just going to click save. Yes, I want to deploy to development. I can take a quick look at our summary and then click deploy. So that completed successfully. And if I open another browser window, paste in my dev environment URL, just click enter, we can see that random quotes is there. First thing we can see is that version 1.0.0 has been deployed to dev. So we know we're looking at the right version. And if we click refresh a few times, we can see that it is hooked up to the database. And if we take a look at our server again, I'll just refresh here. You can see that we now have, well, number one, a migration history table, and we have our quote table. So if I just take a look at the data, we can see that our initial seed data has been inserted as well. So everything looks good. Now I'm going to create a second release. I'm gonna call this one 1.1.0, because this is the point when we've added a new feature. Now this time I'm going to use my latest package. This is the one with my second migration that will create an author's table. Now I'm just going to click save. Yes, I want to deploy to dev. The summary looks good. So let's deploy. 
that also completed successfully. So if I open up my dev URL again, we can now just have that load. Now we can see a couple things again. Number one, our app settings have been updated. Version 1.1.0 has been deployed to our development environment. If I click refresh a few more times, we can see that it's working properly. And now if I click Paul Rand, we can see our quotes by author page. So that was deployed successfully as well. And if we take a look at AWS quickly and just go to our tables, click refresh, we can now see that our author table has been added. And if we just run a query there, we can see that it has all our authors, which is great. Now I'd like to talk about rollbacks. If something goes wrong during your deployment, there's generally three ways you can handle it. The first is to roll back, that is to revert to the previous version of your app. In our case, we could just redeploy version 1.0 of our web app. Next is to roll forward. And this is kind of the best case. That's where you can fix the problem and deploy a new version. So if you've automated your deployment process, it makes this much, much easier. The final option is to roll over, where sometimes you can have intermittent or transient problems, often because of networks. So if you try again to repeat a deployment, it can succeed. Whenever possible, we like to recommend to roll forward because this works for both your applications and databases. But if you do need to roll back, this is an easy fix for your web apps and services, but databases require more thought. One nice feature of entity framework migrations is that it supports generating scripts in reverse, which means you can generate a script that allows you to roll back your changes. But this also requires you to think about how you design your migrations. One of the things I did in my second migration was to leave the quote author column in place instead of removing it immediately. This was done intentionally to make the migration additive so that I could always roll back in the future. Once I shipped my changes and I was happy with them, I could easily deploy an update that removed that column. This really makes rollbacks easier. This is a simple case, but the principle needs to be considered on larger projects as well, which can be challenging, but it's definitely possible. If you're new to Octopus, you might be asking yourself, why would you use this over doing things manually or executing them with scripts or on your build server? The main advantages are you deploy your database changes and updates alongside your application for very easy coordination. You can use a single consistent deployment process for repeatable and reliable deployments. And it's easy to automate. I didn't do any custom scripting. This was nice and easy. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below, including a link to start a free 45 day trial of Octopus Deploy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos weekly. Happy deployments.